Samsung's Galaxy Z Flip 6 and Z Fold 6 devices are on the iFixit teardown table today, and if they look familiar, well, that's because not much has changed on the outside. The Flip has a slightly more matte finish, and the Fold has some brighter screens and a pretty epic camera bump. But as the majority of upgrades lurk below the surface, let's break out our ProTech and start digging into Samsung's latest folding devices. Up first, the Flip 6, and we're pretty sure we know the way to its heart. I'll start with applying heat to the outer screen and back cover to loosen the glue holding these two parts in place. Our anti-clamp is maybe a little too helpful with the dismantling process and lifts the lower edge of the screen just enough for a pick, while simultaneously creating a massive gap in the bottom cover, but you can't complain about a two-for-one opening procedure. The lower cover comes away easily as there are no cable attachments to worry about, and since the exterior screen does have a cable attachment, I'm cutting through the adhesive a little more carefully up here. Disconnecting the press connector with the spudger frees the outer screen and lets me tackle the metal bracket holding the wireless charging coil in place. Now, I almost have a clear path to the larger battery. At first glance it looks like the cables might easily peel back, but the interconnect cable is buried under the speaker assembly which also has to come out. At this point, we're looking at a blow-by-blow -blow replay of the Flip 5 teardown from last year. The process is exactly the same. With the speaker assembly out, I have access to the battery pull tabs, which we first saw on the Flip and Fold 5 phones. They usually work well and allow for an easier battery removal experience. Moving to the top of the housing, I need to remove the metal bracket securing the various press connectors covering the smaller battery, and there are a few of them. The battery cable, the 5G antenna cable, screen and interconnect cables, and the side button cables. And out comes the second battery. The smaller pull tabs on this battery provide just enough leverage to pull it away. The batteries together provide a total of 4000 milliamp hours, which is a bit more than the 3700 milliamp hours found in the Flip 5. The teardown is not complete until we see all the potentially replaceable gadget guts. The camera flash assembly is my next volunteer, and removing the screws on the camera assembly frees up the entire mainboard for removal. The daughter board holding the USB-C port at the bottom looks pretty sad by itself, so I went ahead and removed the two screws holding it in place and set it free. It's time to heat that expensive and highly unrepairable foldable screen, starting with the bezel, which is a fairly simple process on the newer flip and fold phones. The glue holding the foldable screen extends all the way underneath, but the display does come away seemingly intact. Whether it survived or not is a mystery for now, but let's move on to the Fold 6 and see what the disassembly process looks like there. Just like the Flip, I need to heat the back cover and exterior screen to find my way inside the phone. My anti-clamp gives me the opening I need to cut through the glue and remove the back cover. The exterior screen puts up a fight, but once I've cut through the glue, it's easy enough to detach the single press connector that frees the screen from the body. Inside, I see the wireless charging coil, which peels away easily, fully revealing the battery underneath. I can see press connectors recessed under components, so I'm going to make my way around removing the top brackets, lower speaker assembly, and daughter board bracket. After disconnecting battery cables, interconnect cables, 5G cables, and all their friends and relatives cables, I finally have access to the pull tabs that… that tab ripped. Great. Well, let's try the smaller battery first and deal with that mess later. Thankfully, no drama here, the tab works just like expected. Back to that first battery. I'm gonna have to use some alcohol and some picks to get it out. This isn't great because the alcohol might leak through to the very expensive foldable panel underneath and damage it, but we'll try and avoid that. With the batteries out, we're looking at a total typical capacity of 4,400 milliamp hours. I have another half dozen or so cables to deal with before I can remove either of these boards. With those cables disconnected, I only have a few screws holding the boards and main camera assembly in place. All that's left now is that foldable inner screen. Apply some heat, remove the bezels, scrape the glue extending all the way underneath the screen. It's the same process as the Flip 6, just bigger. Realistically, you'd hopefully only be doing this to remove a broken screen, so any damage to the panel during this process wouldn't be an issue, but it's nerve-wracking anyway. All in all, the Flip 6 and Fold 6 haven't changed that much structurally since the last generation. While we do have a relatively straightforward battery removal process, there's a catch. The display removal process is still complicated, and the foldable screens are only rated for a number of fold operations, about five years worth. And even then, there are plenty of examples of screens delaminating way before that five-year mark. For devices with a built-in end of life, we'd love to see Samsung doing better with their foldables and having a repair program that we could um, flip out about. 